Hi, it's Richard Moore from Racing Profits Guides and we're up here at York Racecourse with William Darby, the Chief Executive and the Clerk of the Course here at York. He's been Clerk of the Course here for 10 years so we thought we'd have a bit of a chat with William all about York and the season ahead. Nice to see you today William, how are you? Yeah, really good Richard, thank you. Looking forward to a great season. Lovely. And tomorrow's obviously the start of the Dante Festival. I suppose this must be your busiest time of year from now onwards then? Yeah, really busy time as we come out of the winter, pull together all the projects we've been up to in the winter, looking forward to the horses running this week. And you know, from now on to through to August, September, October, it's a really busy time for the racecourse team but hugely exciting. Mm -hmm. And there's some really exciting projects. As you look around the course, I mean, York is constantly developing anyway. It seems to be there's always something new happening here, but certainly the North End development looks like it's uh, going to be a, a cracking addition to the course. Yeah, really, really pleased with how that's coming along. We've got the first phase opening for May 2014. That's really the horsey area of the race course, the pre-parading, saddling boxes, re um, sampling unit, and the washdown area. That's mm -hmm. all relocated, made bigger, more modern. Mm. And then next year we get a new weighing room building um, and develop the race goer areas in that area of the course. So really exciting times and a lot to look forward to. Mm. And as Chief Exec, is that your decision where the money gets invested next in the course or is it a, a board decision that you sort of steer? Yeah, work very closely with the York Race Committee. When we felt got a master plan that we've been working our way through, we did the big track project in 2008 and 9, mm. developed the Melrose stand behind us, the owner's facility in the Melrose Club Lounge. We've done work around other areas of the race course. So this is part of our investment in the built assets at York. Some £40 million has been invested over the last 12 years, really, to keep keep York moving forward and competing on a global scale. I was going to say, it, I mean, it is world class, you'd say, wouldn't you? I mean, you must be very proud to be the chief exec here. Well, there are always areas we look to improve. And of course, it's all about the racing that we stage at York. All we do is reinvest our money in either prize money, facilities, or the experience of coming racing at York. Mm -hmm. It's very important that people can come have a great day, whether they're horses, horsemen, or race goers, uh, and people coming to enjoy the day out. So mm. we work very hard at that, and hopefully we can go on and build on our previous success and, and move forward. Yeah, and you always have massive crowds here, don't you? I mean, you, it's well known that York's always setting 30,000 plus here at the meetings. We get huge support from, from the, both the local area and further afield, and people really seem to enjoy and care about their racing at York and the horses and the jockeys that come here. Mm. And it's a huge privilege to be part of that and enjoy that atmosphere that's created but on the stands behind us mm. on a busy race day in summer. Yeah, we get 40,000 on some of our big summer Saturdays during July. Mm. Um, we've got a, the nice thing about the Dante Festival we're just building up to, it's not so busy. Mm. And people often say to me it's their favorite festival because we've got the quality of the horses on the track yeah, and not yeah. quite such a, a busy, busy grandstands as some of the summer Saturdays. But it's all about a balance and hopefully offering a varied race day experience for different people on different days. And I think that's what I really like about York. I mean, like some of the major courses around the country, but you've really uh, got on board with this whole music festivals in the summer as well, and it really does make it a community course again. Yeah, our music showcase festival in, in late July is really built built very recently, over since 2004 we first started. Now I think it it's Madness, a, was it? Uh, um, <laughs> they were one of the first. Yeah, yeah we've yeah. had Madness, Blondie, Scouting for Girls, and really built and built. Last year we had Kaiser Chiefs, which I think Fabulous, is the biggest yeah. evening meeting on a British race course. And then we've had the biggest attendance ever for a um, music and racing event on the Saturday afternoon. So mm. it's something different. We'd like to stage quality racing as well on yeah, those yeah, days. Absolutely. So we have the Skybet York Stakes Group 2 race on the Saturday and a listed race, the Lyric Stakes on the Friday evening. So it's about offering people a great experience, both racing and Mm. Bit of a different and do you find experience. it does bring a different crowd in on the music night yeah. so it's introducing different people to racing absolutely and we're quite careful about the bands we select so mm. we want to this year we've got beach boys so um i think everyone knows the beach boys track Definitely, and then yeah. wet 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 on the saturday so maybe a more slightly more mature audience people are going to enjoy their racing enjoy their day out and, and the, music the music afterwards, afterwards well. yeah fabulous and looking at the track i mean it's in fantastic condition you said you did quite a lot of work was it 2008 2009 you did yeah we did a really big project then two and a half million pounds invested in the racing surface itself drainage projects irrigation systems service road around the inside mm -hmm. but what we've done this winter is we've um that's four or five years ago now and like any asset you have to keep investing in it so we've 
we've done the sand slits up the home straight really to reconnect the surface of the race course to the drainage below so that's right. worked really well we're really mm. pleased to have done that in the light of the recent rain that we've had mm -hmm. um, and we're That's looking fantastic. forward to racing racing coming back yeah and was it mainly the drainage work then obviously being the naves mire it, it, it is quite a yeah it's a, cha it's a challenging area. part of the world obviously um it, yeah the naves mire in, in its name but we've tried to improve it gradually over the years and mm -hmm. and we're much better able these days since we put the drainage system in and the ground steams work to withstand the type of rainfall that people might have seen over the weekend mm -hmm. um so it's taken that really well and now the sun's out and, and it's Fantastic, starting to dry yeah. off again. And the, uh, the course now is a full round, obviously yes. you've been here 10 years, so it must yes. have been your early days that yeah. you had Royal Ascot. Yeah, one it? of my first things was to, to complete the circle at York. Um, we were a horseshoe formation, we completed the circle in advance of Royal Ascot at York coming in 2005. That was an amazing experience and, and a huge asset now because we can start long distance races in front of the stands. Um, and, and one of those things I think people wonder why why it wasn't a circle previously, but we survived for 250 years without one. But it um, does mean we, we're giving horses a better area to pull up on now as well as staging the long distance races. That's right. So the Lonsdale Cup before you completed the round that was further down the yeah down the it started spur. way over behind behind the stands um right in the corner of the naze mar so we staged two that mile, two yeah. mile we now we now have given that two furlongs back to the common land of the city of york council so the and one mile six is the furthest the one stand mile down. six is the mm -hmm. furthest stand just near the tyburn on the far side of the naze mar mm -hmm. And then coming round the course, you've got the one mile four just on the back straight there. Yeah, that's the Darley Yorkshire Oaks start. That's where the, 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 the north bend, as we call it, joins up with the back straight. Um, right, yeah. A very, very good start there. Um, and then moving further forward, we get to our 10 furlong start, which is probably our most important start, the extended 10 furlongs. Yeah. Both the, the Musadora, Tassels Musadora and the Betfred Dante this week will be start, starting from there. And of course the richest race we staged, the £800,000 Jumbo International, is a 10 far long race. A really important start for us. Yeah, obviously a lot of people know the Judmont from Frankel here. So Absolutely, that was an amazing day for us. You know, the world's highest rated racehorse coming to race in our richest race we staged sponsored by the owner and breeder obviously mm -hmm. um a very emotional time so henry cecil's probably his last time i think on the naze mar itself that he, here, yeah. that he came here and and the crowd we were 50 percent up on the previous day's crowd mm -hmm. it was just an, a huge wonderful atmosphere yeah, to see. I was here see. that day and it really was, I yeah. remember it. Well, yeah, I think you, you never every, forget it. Absolutely, you? you know, a magical day and, and we're just pleased that he came and went on to be the wonderful horse that he was. Mm. 